Hello, this is Dr. Ali Bahrawi again. This is a, my third lecture in a series of three lectures about the design of examination paper. The first lecture was about the type of questions. The second was about using the schoolhouse test software to compile examination questions, the software used at the Faculty of Engineering. And this lecture, the third in a series, speak about design of examination paper uh, that has different aspects that we haven't discussed in the previous two lectures. The design of examination paper, the contents of uh, the, the presentation will include an introduction, uh, speaks about the difference between legibility and readability of text, then we talk about typography and the top 10 fonts, then uh, writing with Microsoft Word and a section about literature review to see that other people think similarly and the last slide shows the exam paper instructions adopted by the Faculty of Engineering according to my comments. Educators give special attention to some attributes of examination papers in terms of information that has to be present like code, name of the course, exam, time, date, number of pages, very similar to what we have seen in the previous lecture about the schoolhouse test uh, software. And some schools uh, review exam questions uh, to make sure that it addresses the learning objectives uh, before the actual examination takes place. However, in this particular presentation, there are other important elements almost not addressed in producing examination papers, such as language, structure, and appearance of the exam test. Uh, for example, poorer English articulation of the problem, especially in engineering, is needed. Uh, proper English in articulation is needed. Some teachers may have little knowledge of English and compose problems that may be difficult to be understood by native English speakers. The presentation introduces a subject. It explains the difference between legibility and readability. Uh, it reviews the details of related typographical features with examples and most used typefaces showing how to use Microsoft Word uh, for both readability and legibility of text. Not only text but table graphs in addition to giving example from literature to show how other people investigated the same issue. The last slide give examples of the guidelines set by me and adopted by the administration of the Faculty of Engineering. Legibility versus readability. Readabil uh, legibility has a, a, a different uh, definition, but in this slide, this is what we are going to adopt here. Legibility is the appearance of fonts or texts where readability is a measure of how difficult is a paragraph is to be read. However, if you go to uh, the Wikipedia definition of readability, uh, in this particular definition, readability includes legibility within the definition. They say in natural language, the readability of text depends on its content, the complexity of its vocabulary and syntax, and its presentation such as typographical aspects like font size, line height, character spacing, and line lengths. Therefore, I don't like you to get confused because in this presentation, readability has to do with the difficulty of text to understand and the legibility has to do with the appearance. Here, uh, adopting the, uh, the previous definition, it gives you an example of uh, legibility is how well you see the letters and readability is how easily you read words as in long passages of text where are very different requirements in each case 
depending on the visibility of the text and the level of experience of the reader. People have used multiple methods to identify readability in text. How one can search in text to find such patterns that textually emerge as either readable or legible depends on many factors such as X height, serif presence, leading, etc. And the last uh, three words here has to do with typography. This is why I'm giving you this uh, slide here to show you some definitions mentioned in the previous slide. Uh, here is the leading. Leading is the difference between the lines. And uh, we have here the X height. And we have other things like the serif, the stem, the final, the, the ball, the shoulder, the eye, the counter, the descender, the ascender, the terminal. Typography has a lot of details. Here, what is uh, leading in leading in typography? Because this has to do with the history of uh, of printing. In typography, leading is a space between adjacent lines of type. The exact definition varies from one part of the world to the other. In hand typesetting, leading is the thin strips of lead or aluminum that were inserted between the lines or type in the composing stick to increase the vertical distance between them. And this is where the name comes from. Legibility is a measure of how easy it is to distinguish one letter from the other in a typeface. A function of typeface design and here there is some examples. These two typeface this uses the same font size and line height. The first is legible in all capitals and the second is not. Therefore it is easy to read the first line in capital and it is not easy to read the second line. Readability is a measure of how easily words and phrases and blocks of text can be read. A function of typography again. This is the second definition and they are giving examples. The block of text below is hard to read. Yes, it has a low degree of readability for many reasons. Uh, whereas the block of text below has a high degree of readability even though it uses the same typeface and font size. Therefore, here shows you how the examining person can adjust uh, the same typeface and the same font size to be more readable. This is the purpose of this se series of slides. Here, uh, this some uh, text on the left hand side and text on the right hand side and it shows that the text on the right hand side is more readable than the one on the left hand side. The same thing goes here again and it asks you which example is easier to read. Of course the right is easier, easier to read than the left. Here has to do with letter spacing and the use of letter spacing properly. Uh, th the example in the middle is uh, proper use of letter spacing. The one up is uh, a little dense and the one down is a little sparse but it is the best letter spacing in the one in the middle. Here also uh, an example uh, that shows that the text uh, at the bottom is more readable or legible according to the first definition than the text above. The same thing here. Here is also an interesting example. Uh, we hold this truth to be self-evident why uh, the text to the left increases eye strain and it weakens reading stamina. But the left to the right, the text to the right decreases eye strain and strengthens reading stigma. Why? Because of the use of dark gray 
on white background is better than pure black. All these examples can, can, can be used for examination papers. Uh, the text to the left is bad and the text to the right is good. More examples. H here also it shows you that it's written in Arial typeface 25 point and it looks readable. The font style here is regular. Regular means per vertical. The line height is set to 30 point and the letter spacing is 5 point. But the text down is written in Arial typeface, the same 25 point, but it doesn't look re reliable. Why? The font style here is bold italic, and the line height is set to 18 point, and the letter spacing is 0 point. And this is why the text above is more illegible. Typography, I, I made this uh, group of slides to speak about in the typography in detail. Here is another definition uh, slide that shows you the cap height, uh, the uppercase character, uh, and uh, the ear, the terminal, the link. Uh, some of the definitions here have been said, uh, shown before, but uh, this is a different way of uh, defining the elements of typography. The typeface is set of one or more fonts in one or more sizes designed with stylistic unity, each comprising a coordinated set of glyphs. A typeface usually comprises an alphabet of letters, numerals, and punctuation marks. It may also include ideograms and symbols or consists entirely of them, for example, mathematical or map making symbols. But there is a difference between typeface and font. Some people use them ex uh, exchangeably, but uh, I like you to know the difference. A font designates a specific member of the type family as Roman, bold face, or ital italic type, while typeface designates a consistent visual appearance or style which can be a family of related set of fonts. For example, a given typeface such as Arial may include Roman, bold, and italic fonts. If you look at the next slide, it's a good example because what's on the left is the typeface, Roboto, but what's in the right is different fonts extracted from the same uh, typeface Roboto with different names like thin, light, regular, medium, bold, black, here is also another slide with, with uh, different uh, definitions, but here uh, in, are made in three lines to show you uh, more details about the standard typeface anatomy. The design, the Gutenberg's black letter types, which is the first man uh, that invented the typesetting, and the early Venetian Roman typefaces were based on a broad-edged pen calligraphy of their day. Metal type uh, look took the place of calligraphy and the printed book spread knowledge to the masses because of Mr. Gutenberg. Computer lettering. Uh, many more people are designing alphabets in much less time. However, the best lasting design are still produced by experts. While the computer is widely used to, uh, in letter form design, it is simply another tool, like the pencil, pen, or brush, in the hands of the designer. Here are some basic definitions related to typography, like Roman, which refers to the upright version of font face in a typeface family, Pika, is a unit of measure equals to 12 points, and point is the standard typographic measurements equivalent to approximately 72 points per inch, and these are the points we used when we used uh, Microsoft Word to uh, control the size of letters. Uh, 12 points means 12 multiplied by 1 divided by 72 of an inch. DPI 
is uh, the, the abbreviation for dots per inch, and in the standard monitor resolutions are either 72 or 96 dots per inch. Here, uh, uh, rivers are not rivers as in water resources, but rivers here is a typographic river running down the middle of a patch of text like the one you see here. They occur with any spacing through they are most noticeable uh, with wide interword spaces caused by either full text justification or monospaced fonts. In addition to rivers, we have also lakes. Uh, lakes, uh, a less frequently used term is a lake, which refers to a cluster of adjacent interwined rivers that create a lighter area in the midst of a block of time. How I myself invented this uh, paragraph because I used a lot of long words to, to magnify or ex uh, exaggerate the, the lakes. And the solution to this is to use hyphenation. And this is how the text look like if you use hyphenation, which is a function uh, in Microsoft Word that uh, depends on the syllables of the English words. But this does not appear in Arabic. Here is a tour through the top 10 fonts for the year 2020 and when to use them. There are uh, 10 fonts, but I'm going to go uh, for the definitions for the first three and the remaining seven I'm going to to tell you the name and you have a look at the font uh, to save time. Uh, knowing the top fonts in use today and when and where to use them can give your printing company a competitive edge. Now it's we are not a, com a printing company but we print our exams more and more brands are becoming font conscious when designing their campaigns. If you speak about brands, should the faculty of engineering has a brand? Yes, it should. Being able to provide your input on typeface selection early uh, in the sales cycle can land your quality customers for the long run. There is a quite a few different lists of top fonts. We have chosen the Google the Googles because the fonts on it are readily available for everyone and because they are the most applicable to general printing applications. The first one is Helvetica and this is it looks like uppercase, lowercase and numbers uh, and it remains the world's most popular font. It's best known for signage and when designing business forms like invoices and receipts. It's effortless to read because of its large X height makes it look larger than it is. That makes it a great choice when customers need to use very fine print. The most common criticism of Helvetica is that it lacks character. That's great if you want to, to leave a very neutral impression, uh, but using a more distinctive font can help you get a reaction from your readers. The second uh, typeface is Calibri and this is a runner-up number two on our list and it's also sans serif font. What is sans serif? It's just uh, the letters do, do not have the notches defined uh, in the previous slides when I showed you typography details. However, it has more characters than Helvetica the set which is tighter and the letter shapes are rounder and more creative. Microsoft designed Calibri and it's now the default font in Microsoft Office. Uh, its modern and business casual look makes it a perfect choice for most business documents. Here is a Futura uh, typeface and this is the third uh, classic sans serif font. If you are noticing a trend, you are not mistaken. Sans serif fonts are in fashion today because they reflect the mood of our postmodern era. Futura is the best known geometric font in use today. Its characters are all down, drawn from the circle, the square, and the triangle. 
if your customer wants readers to see it as ultra modern or futuristic, this is the accepted choice to make. I will stop reading the definitions, then I will go uh, faster to cover the, the remaining seven fonts. This is Garamond. This is Times New Roman. This is Serif font, which is the best known Serif font in the world, as uh, dipped just below Garamond in popularity recently. This is Arial. This is Cambria. This is Verdana. And this is Rockwell. The last one is Franklin Gothic. Now I'm going to give you a last word about fonts. These 10 go-to fonts should be part of every printer's vocabulary, knowing that they look like and uh, knowing what they look like and when to use them is an excellent way for your printing company and in our case for designing the examination paper. We should remind readers that this is by no means exhaustive list. A great book that is uh, practically exhaustive is the essential type directory uh, written by Peter Dawson. No matter what reference you use, today's printing industry faces innumerable fonts from which to choose. There are too many choices. Here is the discussion of how uh, Microsoft Word uh, can help us. Uh, I, I have created this quote, my own quote, that stresses the importance of writing or designing anything, including the examination paper. Every time you write a paragraph, put numbers in a table uh, to convert data into a graph, you are sending a part of yourself with it without knowing. Therefore, you have to be very careful. This slide is about how the cursive uh, font is disappearing. Use of computers in education and writing is the start of the end of the cursive and even for handwriting in general. Uh, this particular cursive in, uh, in the English language, it's taken from the classical Arabic script. Letters of any given word are joined to one another by continuous flowing line. This flowing script inspired the cursive of medial, medieval Latin. This means uh, the cursive was not originally known before the medieval Latin people saw the classical Arabic script. Uh, if you know Arabic language, uh, we don't have separate letters. All letters in, in Arabic are joined, and this is what inspired the people uh, using uh, English, French, and German to use the cursive uh, typeface. I like this slide. It comes from Ontario, where I spent my PhD years. It says, uh, Jean Molinar was shocked when he found that his son Lucas, 14 years old, couldn't sign his name. Why? Because cursive line isn't part of the curriculum in Ontario schools. In our Egyptian school here, I don't know about you, but in my time, I used to have uh, a class, special class for calligraphy, and my desk used to have a special uh, pen and a special uh, bottle for ink that I use uh, in this particular class. Readability measurement. How do I measure readability as the ease of understanding text? Uh, this is uh, a recent research on readability. Why recent? Because it has to do with COVID-19. Uh, and the question, research question is how well do the written communications COVID-19 information available on the internet meet the readability requirements of the general, the general public? It's an interesting piece of research, but uh, what I want to, uh, to, to clarify here that they use the three commonly used scores to measure readability. Flash reading e-score, the smog index, and the readability consensus grade level. The flash reading e-score 
was developed in 1940s and it is calculated using uh, some aspects of sentences and paragraphs uh, and the, uh, uh, the score ranges from 1 to 100 with a low score indicating reading greater reading difficulty. Therefore, when it was 10, 20 percent is very difficult to read, but 90, 100 percent is very uh, easy to read. The definition of ASL and ASW will be described when we go to the part of how Microsoft Word handles this measure of readability. A document considered accessible by the general public should score 60 or more. But this particular measure is criticized for its simplicity. Here is a, a table that shows the, the flash reading e-score and its relation to United States educational level and how uh, the United States Department of Health and Human Services uh, classify the text uh, as difficult, average, easy in the study for the COVID-19 uh, internet material. The smog index was developed in 1969 and it was designed to measure complete comprehension whereas other readability formula only measure partial comprehension. Uh, to calculate the reading grade, one counts the number of words with three or more syllables across three ten sentence samples. Uh, the one calculates the square root uh, of the total and adds three to the result. This shows you the mathematical equation used to calculate the smoke index. Here is the readability consensus grade level. All these three definitions has to do with the research of COVID-19 and this measure is based on the average results from seven well-known and used instruments. Clearly, there are other parameters in a document that are not measured by this formula. Here is another table that uh, shows you the relation between grade level in, in American schooling and the uh, level of readability and the age of the grade level and the grade level itself. Here we show you the relation between measuring readability and MS Word and uh, the like Microsoft Word uses two, uh, measure, two measures to measure the, um, the readability. The flash, uh, flash Kincaid readability tests uh, and there are two tests. The flash reading easiness and the flash Kincaid grade level. We have seen the flash reading easiness before. Uh, although they use the same core measures like word length and sentence length, they, are, they have different weighting factors so that the results of the two tests correlate approximately inversely. Inversely means uh, a higher value for the measure in one uh, of these uh, scores uh, corresponds to a lower one in the second score, as you will be, see here. The flesh reading is, uh, this is the equation, and this is the definition of ASL, which is the average sentence less measured by the number of words divided by the number of sentences. And ASW is average number of syllables per word measured as the number of syllables divided by the number of words. And this is the other uh, scoring test. And it has also mathematical formulas using the same ASL and ASW. But I want you to notice here that uh, flesh reading is you want the score to be between 60 and 70. But in the flesh Kincaid grade level, you want for most documents is to score approximately 7 to 8. One of them in percent and one of them in grade level. And uh, this is uh, how I, I explain to you how to find this in Word. You go to Home and then you click on Options. And from Options you go to Proofing. And from Proofing you, you get to uh, 
when uh, correcting spelling and grammar in Word, you have to click Show Readability uh, Statistics. Then you click OK, but this is not the end of the story. You go to uh, the editor here in the Review tab under the Proofing group. And then after you check spelling and you check grammar, you get this window that tells you the readability statistics for this particular text I wrote about uh, the same subject of design of examination paper. Uh, the flash reading is were 58.8 uh, uh, and the flash king kid grade level was 90.4 and uh, there is also a measure of the passive sentences they represent 13 or 14 percent of the text here uh, talking about readability in word we have to talk about legibility in word too he uh, the legibility in word has to do with white space why? Because white space segregates information into manageable segments. And these are the examples I found inside Word that allows you to, to put white space before and after headings, margins between paragraphs, unjustified right margin or call it ragged text, uh, indented sentences and lists, either bulleted lists, enumerated lists or even checklists. Uh, here is an interesting part about uh, space after the period. Uh, there is always a question between uh, typesetting people to put one space or two spaces after the period. But, but the debate um, um, in this issue uh, uh, is a little detail that makes or breaks the design. Why? Because uh, speaking of little details, Despite what some readers may believe, period is the proper term for that little dot at the end of the sentence in American English. In some parts of the world, they call it full stop. Here, it is generally accepted that the practice of putting two spaces at the end of a sentence is a carryover from the days of typewriters with monospace typefaces. Most type set text both before and after typewriter use a single space. Today, with the prevalence of proportionally spaced fonts, some believe that the practice is no longer necessary and even detrimental to the appearance of text, meaning we only uh, nowadays, because we are not using the typewriter anymore, is to use one space only after the period. We mentioned in the previous slide the word monospaced and proportional fonts. There are two types of fonts. In monospaced, every character takes the same amount of space on the page. Uh, M uses the same amount of space as I. With proportionally spaced fonts, the characters take up an amount of space uh, relative to their actual widths, where the I needs less space than the M. The use of proportionally spaced type makes two spaces at the end of a sentence unnecessarily, which was mentioned in the previous slide. The extra spacing is often distracting and unattractive. It creates holes in the middle of a block of text, trapped white space on a smaller scale. Letter spacing adjustment. Letter spacing is increased or decreased by modest, usually unnoticeable amount to fix some unattractive situations like widows and orphans. What is widows and orphans? It's uh, an option in Word where we don't leave uh, single lines alone at the beginning of page or at the end of a page. And if you set uh, this option, uh, which is the default, they will not uh, leave uh, lines alone at the beginning or end of a page. Such situation can look bad, hurt readability, and destroy continuity for the reader. And here is how to, uh, to adjust the uh, widows and orphans. Can you see here? It is a this slide shows the widows and orphans options in Word. You will find it uh, 
in the paragraph uh, group and this is uh, it is always ticked here where orphans, uh, orphans and widows are the default in word. Here is the definition that I just mentioned uh, in the previous slide. Here is also a, a good uh, slide that shows you that Microsoft Word has hidden formatting symbols that affects the legibility of text. I am going to go through them. This is a paragraph mark. This is a left tab mark. This is a title mark. This is a default tab mark. And this is uh, the paragraph mark again. This particular uh, mark here is uh, manual uh, line end. We use them when we don't want the next line to be uh, a paragraph. Heading details, actually this is a heading and we can change a lot of the features of headings. And uh, ex like Microsoft Word gives us a lot of options to choose from and gives us also the ability to modify uh, the, the style used here. This is how to change the style. After I, I change the style to what I want, I can make global change by clicking on update uh, heading to, to match selection. Say for example, I for this particular uh, title, I changed the color, the font size, uh, and then I can click uh, this update uh, heading to match uh, selection to, to change the whole headings of the same uh, type like abstract. Here is how to modify the style. You can modify the font, the paragraph, the tabs, many things. There, here there are some details that we may not be interested in and this is how to control the paragraph sta spaces by uh, changing space before and after and changing the indentation. Here are some guidelines to control legibility of the text. Uh, some commonly used findings of legibility research include text set in lowercase is more legible than text set in uppercase. All these advices are important for people who write their examinations. Extenders and other projecting parts increase prominence. Regular upright case is found to be more legible than italics. Contracts with black on yellow cream is most effective. Positive images, black and white, are easier to read than, than negative. The upper portions of letters may be a stronger part than the lower portions, and this is derived from, from uh, typography. Letter spacing, there are two uh, ways we can, we can control letter spacing. Because it's called tracking, which is uh, referring to the amount of space between a group of letters. And you have to distinguish between tracking and kerning. Sometimes letter spacing is confused with kerning. But kerning is defined differently from tracking as applied specifically to the adjustment of spacing of two particular characters to correct visually uneven spacing and I'm going to give an example here. Can you see this is tracking which is group of letters and this is example of kerning. I want you to notice the relation between capital K and small e, capital W and small e and here capital L and small y and these two slides give you the uh, in a pictorial image the difference between kerning and tracking. Letter spacing affects legibility. The amount of letter spacing can affect legibility. Tighter text, our tighter letter spacing, particularly in small text sizes, can diminish legibility. The addition of minimal space letter spacing can often 
increase the legibility. Added white space around the characters allows the individual characters to emerge and be recognized more quickly. Uh, information lists, and this is very important in question papers. Why? In examination papers. Because what you want from the student to answer, if you want uh, three or four things, don't put them in, in a paragraph. It's better to put them in list. Uh, you can use a number list so that the student would know what is exactly uh, he is requested to answer. Punctuation also is very important. Here are very uh, important rules for uh, punctuation. If the lead-in statement ends with a verb, we use a column, a colon. We, we don't use a colon like this example here. But if the lead-in statement is a complete statement, we use colon. Can you see here some of the main concerns of environmental engineering are we don't use a colon. But here, some of the main concerns of environmental engineers are as follows. It's a complete statement because it has a, a verb and, and, and uh, elements of the sentence. We use a colon. Another uh, detail regarding punctuation is parallelism. Parallelism is in two things, in, pun in uh, capitalization and in grammar. Therefore, items are complete statement used period. Otherwise, we, we use no punctuation. You mean if the list is a complete statement, like logic design has, was completed, we put a period. But in the previous slide, we didn't put a period after air pollution and solid waste disposal. Why? Because they are not complete statement according to the rules here. Consistent capitalization is very clear. And then the grammatical parallelism means we, we use the same beginning. If we get, begin the first list item with a verb, the second will be a verb, the third will be a verb, and so on. The use of tables is also important uh, because you have to look at your text. And this is also important in examination paper. Uh, people use the tables without knowing how to use them. And sometimes they don't use them when they, they should. You have to look at your draft because discussion of two items in which the same categories of statement are made about those items are excellent opportunities for representation as tables as you will see here. Uh, here is we are uh, discussing uh, the ozone levels for Houston and El Paso in 1993. Uh, and this particular slide shows you the table terminology where we have uh, a table title, we have row headings, and we have column headings. And the most important thing in this table is that the first row has to be bold and centered, and the first column has to be left justified. And uh, decimal alignment has to be watched if I am using numbers in tables. Table in Microsoft Word is a bit tricky. Why? Because the cursor itself, like the one I'm using here, changes if you uh, hover around the table. You will find the cursor is changing depending on what you want to do with the table in Word. Some cursors affect columns, rows, widths, height, the whole table, divider, or the indent, or enlarge. And uh, people using tables in Word has to be aware of these functions. He, uh, also, uh, we know that in this, part, in this table, we did interesting, two interesting things. One of them is we were able to calculate the total by using the formula in Microsoft Word without going to Excel. And also we use the decimal tab here to align the decimal top point as you see in, this, uh, in the last column. Another important issue is when the table is too large and it has to go to the next page. It should carry the column headers on the next page where the header rows should be highlighted first 
before allowing uh, Microsoft Word to do this, we go to table tools and we say repeat header rows that are aligned. There are ge general guidelines of using tables in text and of course in examination papers. We have to refer to graphics in text using number or title. Uh, it has to be on the same page. It, in, in general, it has to be positioned vertically and we have to avoid clutter. Clutter means uh, very crowded text and we have to provide titles, notes and keys and data source depending on the amount of information you want the student to know. Spreadsheets and graphics, they are they have a lot of things to do together. They are easy to learn and use. Uh, and what's beautiful about graphics and spreadsheets that uh, spreadsheets allows us to do the calculation and to design the graphics in the safe place. And there is plenty of options. Therefore, we have to think, then do. Here is uh, the types of charts. Why I put some in, uh, in, in black and some in blue? Because these are the common types before 2016. After 2016, uh, Microsoft Office uh, Excel introduced new types of graphs like map, tree map, sunburst, waterfall, funnel, histogram, box and whisker, and combo. And these are very specific types. Uh, not like the general ones in black. To, to make things easy for you uh, to choose the right graph is to ask yourself what is the purpose of the graph? Because uh, this is my own list. I put here eight uh, types of graphs. I, is it whole and its parts? Is it simple comparison? Is it multiple comparison? its relation between variables, is it trends with distance and time, does it uh, show frequencies, is there any hierarchy in the data, or if the data is tied to geographical locations. And here is my own uh, matrix to, to, to show you. This is to help people choose the right graph or the right data. I here uh, make a check uh, that a column chart can be used if the data is simple comparison or it can be used for frequencies and clustered column can be used for multiple comparison uh, as a stacked column uh, and the rest these are uh, the types of graphs and these are the types of data that I covered in the in the previous slide. There are some mistakes that people do but I'm only here mentioning three mistakes. The first one is that in some cases, because the y uh, axis values of the y axis has different values of magnitude, orders of magnitude, I have to use a secondary y axis. In the first example here, we cannot read the flow in billion cubic meter per year because the numbers are very small com compared to the salinity in gram per cubic meters, and this is why I use a secondary axis. The second uh, advice here is if you are using date uh, in, y, in, in X axis. Why? Because there is a date format in, in Microsoft Excel. If you enter the date in a format different than the date formatting, Excel will see these formats as text. Therefore, it will not reflect the relative difference between the values of date. The example above is wrong because it doesn't use the date format in Excel and the one down there shows you that the graph changed drastically uh, because of using the date format. Also in this graph is the same as the previous one. We had to use two y uh, axes one to the left and one to the right because of the different orders of magnitudes of the values of the y-axis. The last mistake on this list is uh, when we have uh, 
when we have when we write like this is uh, like a cross section of a, an irrigation canal and we can either use the line graph up or the XY scatter. There is big difference why? Because is the, in the line graph the difference between the points is the same irrespective of the values and the X axis values appear here. But in the XY scatter we had the, rev the relative distances and we have automatic scaling uh, in the x-axis. People have to be careful, especially if professors uh, made a graph like that in an exam and he doesn't f follow such uh, tips. Uh, it, it may not look very good. Yeah, other people think similarly. I looked into literature and I found uh, some papers. Uh, the titles is the title of the paper. Assessing readability of a national exam, reading text in Malaysia. The highlighted uh, in yellow is what, what I want to read for you. Readability of the English papers was analyzed using three readability formulas. Uh, flash reading is, Gunning Fog Index and Go Matrix L2 Reading Index. Five reading experts were also invited to evaluate the difficulty level of the reading text. Therefore, people also think in Malaysia about the difficulty of the reading exam reading texts. Readability of high stakes uh, oops, uh, physics examination. The study revealed that where a question displayed a linguistic feature of scientific writing, this contributed the students doing an incorrect calculation focusing on the wrong aspect of question, repeating a segment of a question, and misinterpreting a word or a phrase. Therefore, what's highlighted in yellow here showed you what happened to the students if, if the question paper is not, is not readable. This is uh, also another example. The, the paper was titled, The Methodology Used to Assess Readability of the NNAAP Examination. It has to do with nursing uh, schools. It says the length of each item should be, should no longer, should be no longer than two sentences when possible. If the examination item is easy to read, candidates can put more emphasis on the nurse knowledge and content being measured in each item. What are the linguistic features of scientific writing that affect readability? These are uh, linguistic density, defined as high density of information. Uh, that's to say the number of content carrying words. Subordinate clauses, like those uh, whose existence is depending on the main clause. Complex sentences, which are multiple subordinate clauses that are linked in a logical dependency relationships. And this is the rest of the definitions. Uh, unfamiliar words uh, where are rarely occur in the reader's everyday spoken language. Ambiguous words that have different meaning in sci a scientific context and passive voice uh, and it was uh, in technical text because of not mentioning actors involved in the scientific process. These are uh, my last uh, part of the presentation which is a bit longer than my previous two presentations. And these are the guidelines I put. The English language should be simple. Use short sentences. Avoid complex words. The, se the sequence of questions in the exam has to be revised before finalizing the last version. And this second uh, guideline has to do with the design of the examination paper in the second uh, presentation when I talked about the schoolhouse test where I put uh, the questions uh, in, a, in sections of related topics. You have to specify the mark of each question uh, and the mark of every part of the question and here again I am using a list instead of putting this ABC in a paragraph. Uh, the previous was readability guidelines. We Complete the readability guidelines. If you have a long table, split it in two pages. Don't forget to repeat headers and table captions. 
Watch for grammatical and punctuation parallelism of lists. This has to do with readability. But what are the legibility, the legibility guidelines? Uh, the legibility can impact the students, as we meant, known from the presentation. Figures and drawing have to be clear after mass production in black and white. Appearance is mainly controlled by white space because it segregates information into manageable segments, as we mentioned before. And examples of white space are line spacing, before and after headings, margins, and we covered this before. Use left aligned text and not justified. This makes question text more readable. Spaces have to be provided before and after question headers to visually separate each question. Question headers are to be bold. A text set in lower case is more readable than text set in all uppercase. A regular applied type is found to be more legible than italics. And my suggestion is to use Calibri font, which is one of the 10 top fonts in size 11. Use the window orphan option. And items needed to be answered should be in a numbered list and not a paragraph as have shown above. Um, this is a faculty guidelines that were distributed to all professors in the Faculty of Engineering and they were all uh, derived from uh, what I covered in this presentation. And this is uh, the three pages given to each instructor with the logo and the title group uh, and the instructions and guidelines related to readability and legibility of examination text. Thank you very much for taking the time to follow my very long presentation. This is the third presentation in the series. I hope you enjoyed three of them, and I hope that I contributed even to a certain extent to improve the readability and legibility of the examination paper.